Bob, in trying to understand how the brain works, one of the most effective techniques we have, sadly, is when there are problems with the brain that human beings have, and we can see by the, the defects what the normal processes are. What are some examples from sleep? Well, two categories come to mind. There are certain psychiatric and neurologic conditions um, that impair sleep or that impair dreaming that we can actually um, look at the impact on, on the individual. So if we look at the area of sleep and memory, there's a fascinating finding that we reported first in 2004 that if you look at patients with schizophrenia, and in our hands we're using chronic medicated patients, so there's a bit of a complication there that we'll come back to, but if you teach them a simple motor sequence task, teach them to type the sequence 41324, um, it's a nasty sequence, it's hard to learn, and we train them up over about 12 minutes, and they seem to learn it just fine. So being schizophrenia patients doesn't impair their ability to, to learn this task. But normally when subjects then go to sleep overnight or even for just a nap, when they come back the next morning and we test them again, they're actually about 20% faster. They can type it faster and make fewer mistakes. And through a series of studies, it's clear that that's because of active changes that are occurring while they sleep, that their brain is processing that information. Well, when we bring the schizophrenia patients back, they show no improvement mm. whatsoever. And that was sort of stunning to us uh, in some ways because when we looked at their sleep at the at sort of the most superficial level, it looked totally normal. They got about as much sleep as the normal subjects. They had about as much rapid eye movement, REM sleep, as the normal subjects. They had about as much deep sleep, deep non-REM sleep, as the control subjects. We couldn't see anything that was different. But when we look deeper at the electrical activity of the brain, it turns out that there are these, these short pulses that last about a second while you're asleep, which are called sleep spindles. When you get a burst of mm. synchronous activity, it lasts just that long, about boom, 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 and it stops. And previous studies in, in our lab and in other labs have shown that there seems to be a correlation between those sleep spindles and some of this memory processing. And lo and behold, the schizophrenia patients only have about as half as many as normal subjects. So this seems to be, uh, again, one of those unfortunate gifts of nature where we have an abnormal brain that shows us the importance of those sleep spindles, we believe, to, to the normal processing of those memories. So that's one example of what we've seen. And so, a question that comes to mind is these people also have severely impaired consciousness. Um, they, they have psychotic episodes. Um, and even in the non-psychotic state, their, 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 their thinking is not normal. And one of the questions that comes up is, could it be that there are sleep abnormalities that are causing processes to not occur over time, night after night, that is in some way contributory to this. And the strange thing is, we go back and we look, and the amount of these sleep spindles they have seems to be correlated with how severe their positive symptoms are mm. for the disease themselves. Mm. So how those connect remains unclear, but it might be that some of the alteration of consciousness that we see in these people in waking is due to a failure of processes that normally happen night after night while we're asleep. Yeah. Or it could be some other thing that we don't know that's causing both events to occur. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but that, even in itself, is a clue to, yes. to where to look. Although we are starting to get data that we're not 100% confident of yet, that we haven't published, that we can use medications, sleep medications, that will enhance the number of these sleep spindles schizophrenics have. That we're sure about, but it also seems to restore their sleep-dependent improvement on the finger-tapping task, and that's what we're not sure about. And what we would love to do now is do long-term trials with these medications that are just there to treat sleep, 
and see if they can actually improve the symptoms. Because then we have an experimental approach that lets us go from this correlation that says it might be something causing both right. to saying that it is a direct causal right. path. And, and in that case, you, you would be able to have a, a case to be made that part of the reason for schizophrenia has something to do with the, with the abnormalities having to do with sleep. That, that, that would, which be would be a, piece a remarkable. Of it, which would be unexpected and surprising even to me who would love to find it. But we also see some of these effects in more banal cases. So take the case of sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a breathing disorder where when you're asleep, the airwaves tend to collapse so you can't breathe. It causes snoring and gasping. And the way the body deals with this is it wakes up. And so a person with really severe apnea might wake up 30 or 40 or 50 times an hour. An hour? An hour. And they'll wake up for two seconds, enough to activate the muscles in the throat to open up the airways again, and then they fall back asleep, and then the airways collapse, and it does that all night long. And Ina Genlogic, a, a neurologist who I've been working with, has now shown that if you take people with apnea and train them on the same finger-tapping task, they show no improvement overnight either. And when she looked to see what part of sleep is it, in that case, it's not how much sleep or how much REM sleep they get or how much deep sleep they get. It's just how much disruption there is in the night. It's as if when you have too many of these awakenings during the night, although you might actually get eight hours of sleep in a night, you don't get it in a consolidated enough form. There's too much disruption of the sleep. So that it looks like the processes that you need have to go on for longer than the person can manage to stay in the right Which state. would indicate that there's something about the cycles of sleep, the organization of sleep, that is intrinsically necessary for right. memory and for the activities, uh, the consolidation and not activities. Just, just, not just the memory. I mean, if you talk to a person with severe apnea, they are exhausted. They are tired all the time. They, they live in a constant state of sleep deprivation, even if they're getting eight hours of sleep. So you, you need that continuous sleep. And all you need to do is ask the mother of a three-month-old, you know, the disruptions. You know, it doesn't matter if they get, quote, enough sleep by some numerical basis. The disruption is just absolutely crippling. And a way to think about it is that your emotions are totally thrown off, and your consciousness is impaired. I mean, you can't think coherently. You're not safe driving a car. Um, you can't keep your emotions stable. You become labile. So all of those, those higher level conscious functions collapse in the absence of sleep.